Today is my subject. I yes, present your bodies as a living sacrifice. In short, a living sacrifice. Romans chapter 12 is a chapter on the life of the church. The first half of the epistle of Romans is about doctrine. And the second half from chapter 12 is about practical life as Christians. The first of the Christian life is the church life. As regenerate Christians, how can we properly manage the church life? This is the most important matter in the Christian life. Beginning with the church life, chapter 13 discusses life as a citizen of the society and nation. Romans chapter 12 uses the word body rather than the church. Therefore, it is better to express it as the body life than the church life. And uh, it is said that all of us believers and uh, uh, all of us believers are members of one body of Christ. This is written Romans chapter 12 from verse 4 to 5. And each one of us, as members of the body, has different gifts from the Lord to serve in the body and for the body. However, in Romans chapter 12, verse 1, the beginning of the church life, the Apostle Paul says, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that ye present your bodies a living sacrifice, wholly acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. Verse 1 is very important, important to enter the life of the body of Christ. Like this, the verse 1 is just like a door entering to the church life house. Here the Apostle Paul says that you must offer, you must offer your bodies as living sacrifices. But here the Apostle Paul does not commend it, but says that he pleads and appeals and exert. This suggests that there is an element of volunteering in our building up life of the church and serving for the body of Christ. This can be compared to the building of the tabernacle, which is a type of the church in the Old Testament. Through the gift that many people of Israel voluntarily offered. It can also be seen in Leviticus chapter 1, where the Israelites were told to offer their burnt offerings voluntarily. This is written Leviticus chapter 1 verse 3, especially Schofield English Bible version. Translation. In Leviticus, the Israelites were not commanded to offer burnt offerings to God as offerings, but if they would offer it, emphasizing their offerings voluntarily and willingly. Thus, Paul exhorted 
the saints to offer themselves as living, living sacrifice in offering themselves for the building up of the body of Christ. In the building of His temple, God desires to build it through the voluntary efforts and consecration of those who have received His calling and redemption grace. Not by compulsion or stinginess. That is, He wants His house to be built up by those who love Him through the devotion of voluntary saints. That's why the Apostle Paul exhorts us in all the God's mercy present your bodies as a living sacrifice holy and acceptable to God. What does living sacrifice mean here? The sacrifice offered in the Old Testament times were cattle, sheep with dead sacrifices. However, the sacrifice of those who build the New Testament church are not cattle or sheep, but the saints themselves who have received the Lord's grace and grace salvation, offering their living bodies. Therefore, it is a living sacrifice. It is not easy for believers to lay down their lives for the Lord on the altar in one moment. We call it martyr. A martyr. But you mustn't know it is more difficult to live a whole life from now to the end, just like placing our bodies on the altar and to live all our life only for Him and His will. That is, to live as members of His holy body. In other words, the entire chapter of Romans chapter 12 is an explaining detailed chapter about how those who offer themselves as a living sacrifice life. Believers are to serve with the gift they received from the Holy Spirit when they are regenerated. This is the verse from chapter 12, from verse 4 to 8. I want to read for you these verses. Verse 4. Just as each, each of us has one body with many members, and these members do not, have, do not all have the same function. Verse, four, verse four, 5. So in Christ, we who are many form one body, and each member belongs to all the others. Verse 6. We have different gifts according to the grace given us. If a man's gift is prophesying, let him use it in proportion to his faith, from his faith. And uh, verse 7. If it is serving, let him serve. If it is teaching, let him teach. Verse 8. If it is encouraging, let him encourage. If it is contributing to the needs of others, let him give generously. If it is leadership, let him govern diligently. If it is showing mercy, let him do it cheerfully. If I were one member, such as eyes, nose, ears, hands, or feet, I would devote my whole life to serving my body and functioning. Old Testament 
Old Testament priests have a so-called retirement. Like Aaron, when you die is the day you take off your priestly serving robes. Which part of our body is the first to retire? Any member will do their best to fulfill the given mission and duty. And verse from 9 to 11 tell specific ways to use, use the gift to function and serve. This is the same context as 1 Corinthians chapter 12, which speaks of the church life, and then chapter 13, which emphasizes emphasize love for each one of the members. Romans chapter 12, verse 9. Let love be without dissimulation. Without dissimulation. Abhor that which is evil. Cling to that which is good. Verse 10. Be kindly affectionate one to another with brotherly love. In honor, preferring one another. Verse 11, not lustful in business, fervent in spirit, serving the Lord. This is the same essence as the first commandment of the Lord. Love the Lord your God with, you, uh, with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your strength and love your neighbor as yourself. The first scope for believers The first scope for believers to keep this commandment is the body of Christ where they must serve each other in the body with the gifts they have received. That is the church. Also, verse from 12 through 21. Speak of the things that all members should do the same while serving in the body with each gift. We should be rejoicing in hope. Always devote ourselves to prayer and strive to provide for the needs of the saints and provide to provide hospitality. We are told to bless those who persecute us, tell them not to curse, and tell us each other to have one mind. Those who weep are called to weep together. Do not repay evil for evil, but do good in the sight of everyone. All these are virtues that all members offer themselves to the Lord as sacrifice should practice in common. May the Lord bless you all. Amen. Thank you.